In this service, every delay over your life is breaking. If you are saying amen, you say better amen. The awesome God will show to you his awesomeness in this service. You are not saying amen as if you believe it. Being whom he is, I like you to lift up your voice and thank him for what he wants him to do for you. Faithful God, I thank you. You say no more delay. No more delay. No more delay. I thank you for your hand of confirmation. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. amen. God is wiping away your tears. Amen. Somebody's struggle is coming to a permanent end. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. amen. Whether you are delayed physically or delayed spiritually, the embargo over your life is crashing in this service. Make that amen louder. So shall it be for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Congratulations. Please get seated. God bless you. In the first service, we looked at the power of dedication. And we were made to understand that dedication is the mystery behind every fruitfulness. Where you are planted determines the kind of fruits that you will bear. You can be planted in God and end up fruitless. And end up useless. We are also meant to know that dedication is a mystery. When you are planted, it may look as if nothing is happening. But in the realm of the spirit, there is a spiritual transaction that will bring forth that which you desire. So if you are not dedicated, you are the one limiting yourself. Except a corn of wheat fall to the ground, and that is it, it abided alone. So, if you want to bring forth fruits, you must be dedicated. To be dedicated means to be planted. And lastly, we read First Chronicle chapter 15, and we saw something. God vexed them with all adversity. God was the one troubling them. God made sure that things were tight for them. Why? They made up their mind that they will not be serious with God. Just like some people have made up their mind. I don't want anybody to know me. My own is just second service. I just come, I just go. But I tell you something, you will still need this God. Are you wrong saying that? It's better you are planted so that you can flourish. If you are not planted, if you are not dedicated, there is no guarantee that you will flourish in life. This second service, we are going to be focusing on steering your fruitfulness. Steering it. You steer it up. It's already there, but you must provoke it. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in the presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Every good thing is worked out. You work out. Your, Jesus has saved you, but you work out your salvation. Salvation is... Not limited to you being saved from sin. 
healed from disease, from poverty to riches. You work it out. Work it out. Every good thing is worked out. So whatever you don't work, never works. If this place must answer for me, Lafia, are you what I'm saying now? I must work it. I must work it out. I don't just assume. I must do what? Work it out. So every testimony that is generated is a product of acting on specific word from the Lord. If testimony must take place in your life, what did you hear and what are you responding to? In John chapter 2 and verse 5, whatsoever he tells you, do it. Whatsoever he tells you, do it. You don't have the gift of waiting for miracle. You have the gift of working miracles. I'm waiting upon the Lord. God is saying, I'm also waiting for you. I'm waiting for when God will do it. God is saying, I'm waiting for you to make the move. So God has put in our hand what will guarantee our fruitfulness. He has put in our life, he has put in our hands the things that will guarantee our fruitfulness. So we must put it to work. And we're going to see how they are being put to work. So until you are committed to making it work, nobody can work it for you. So you must engage your mind, engage your spirit, engage your soul, engage your body to make sure that what God has said works. Proverbs 23 and verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you feel it's not going to work, it's not going to work because you feel so. So until you change the way you think, it's not possible for you to change the way you live. Permit me to say this. If you carry a battered mentality here, even if they lie, let them move you to London. Things can't work. Oh. Are you not saying now? Somebody was telling me the other day, Pastor, why don't you relocate to Canada? I said, I'm not seeking for refuge. I already have refuge. That, that thing they are looking for in Canada, they can get it here. Is that not how one of our pastors relocated to Canada and is now praying God for money? I said, why don't you stay so that you can learn where? You save, 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 save. Oh, he's selling house. You don't go there. So the wife is walking as a nurse, walking like Jackie. She's a nurse, qualified one, trained. So she's doing extra jobs. I say, you see yourself? He said, if I stay here, I'll learn this thing. I say, you want to go to Canada. The blessings of God comes from above, not from abroad. From where? Because if you mistakenly run away, the only thing you will be sending down is to Kumbokas. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't travel abroad like that. Too. God forbid, Barty. God's redemption plan for me and for you is universal. It's not regional. Are you what I'm saying now? Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jews and the Greeks. For this same Lord over all is rich unto all that calls upon his name. Is good unto all. And Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 9. He said, moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. The king himself is sad. 
have by the field. So you must understand this that you are in a new kingdom with a new constitution. And I make both to say this, your level of understanding is what determines the quality of results you command. Your understanding determines the kind of results you will get. Funny enough, a white man said that if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in writing. Put it in writing. He will never go there. Everything you are looking for has been locked up in information. So you must possess this mindset that your, your, your destiny, your life, your family is not limited by environment or location. You must possess a royalty mentality that as a child of God, things must work for you. First Peter 2 9, but they are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people that you will show forth the praises of Him who have called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Papa said, you are not born again to suffer again. Born again is not a call to slavery. It's not a call to mediocrity. It's not a call to a reduced life. It's a call to a higher life. It's a call to a more better life. So you must carry a mentality that things must work. And if things must work, then you must put it to work. Do everything by all means to kill fear. Do you know that many believers are scared and afraid? In fact, the way this country is going, you don't know. 2019, eh? 2019 is in the hand of God. Am I saying something to somebody? The more ignorant you are, the more your weeping will continue. Ignorance sponsors weeping. Ignorance is the ancestor of failure. It complicates your matter. It looks as if the world is not working, but it's working. Is it working for only some people? No. It is ordained to work for you too. Revelation 5 and verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the roots of David, are prevailed to open the book and lose the seal, the seventh seal thereof. You know, weeping can increase your depression. Weeping can increase your frustration. But scripture says the righteous, they are as bold as a lion. Do you know that if you are bold, they will see it in your face. They will see it. Boldness is sin. Boldness is also hard. So you are not just doing bold face. No, we are not talking about bold face. Boldness is of the heart, not in the face. So that it will look as if now I'm only encouraging you. And after I say, no my what I talk on the hotel. Things are really tight. God forbid. I can't say that. Are you not saying now? I can't say that. Because I've been taught how to make things work. Tell your neighbor, things must work. I'd like us to hear this. Barrenness is not in the plan of God for you. 
when God began to fashion his plan for us, barrenness was not in the agenda. And when we talk about barrenness, we talk about mental barrenness, physical barrenness, career barrenness. It's not in the plan. He said, for I know the plan that I think towards you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. If barrenness was in the plan of God, he would have given to us what he also had. Are you not saying now? But when he made us, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So in the image of God is fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. image of God is fruitfulness. It is in our DNA. Are you hear what I'm saying now? We have been redeemed fruitful in Christ Jesus. I have been redeemed fruitful. You have been redeemed fruitful. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful. And I heard this from God himself. Nobody can unbe what God has be. If God said be, is there any devil that can unbe? Or then one witch in your village, as far as I'm my life, you cannot be. You will die and the thing will still be. So since it is not in his plan, don't expect it. Don't think it. He said in his word in Exodus 23 and verse 26. Let's take it from verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Verse 26. There shall nothing. What is nothing? What is nothing? Nothing. Nothing means what? Cast their young, nor be barren in the land. So if I'm selling pure water now, it will be fruitful. If I'm selling matches now, it will be fruitful. If I'm selling granite, since the granite is everywhere in Joss, I mean in Lafia, I will be fruitful. True of us. In thy land, and the number of thy days I will what? Fulfill. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge. So the word must be in you. You feel unfruitful, you think barren because the word is not in you. So barrenness is a feeling. It has nothing to do with your age. In this ministry, I've seen someone 63 give birth. 63. I've seen 54 in one of my own stations. So age is in number. Am I saying something? We are going to be picking scripture one by one. He said again, Songs of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 2, Thy teeth are like the flocks of sheep that are even shown, which came up from the washing, whereof everyone bear twins, and none is barren among them. Is it in your own Bible? Please open your Bible. Or open your touch. Open your touch. (laughs) 
So God's word assures me, assures you that none shall be barren in the land, nor cast their young. None. Now let's take a look at this. I love this scripture. I love it. Please, as you are going, just be, just be reading it every day. Leviticus 26 and verse 9. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. Is it in your Bible? Studio, put it back. I want, I want, I want to provoke somebody. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And David said, have respect unto thy covenant, O God. For the dark places of the earth are filled with the habitations of cruelty. And in another place he said, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the word that have gone out of my mouth. I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful. I will have respect unto you. God has respect for you and make you fruitful. Who said a thing and it come to pass when the Lord commanded it not? Look at this scripture again. Genesis 17 and verse 6. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee in their generation for an everlasting covenant. God is not a liar. Scripture says, by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. He said, by myself have I sworn in blessing, I will what? Bless you. God cannot lie. I say again, God cannot lie. I stand on the authority of God's word to declare you fruitful. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Hear me, whatever is pronounced on this altar is superior to doctor's report. Yes, Do you agree with me? Yes, because God has the final say. Your doctors, they don't have the final say. So when you stand before God and you have a priest, I want you to hear this. Anything he says, God stamps it. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 17 down to verse 18, then Eli answered and said, Go in thy peace. And the Lord God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Did Hannah get it or not? Did Hannah get it or not? I say to you, that which has made you to cry, the hand of God put it in your hand. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Every doubt that have kept you on the same spot, they are broken today in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The enemy that is desiring that you remain the state where, where you are, their spell over you is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Whichever weapon they have fashioned against you, I speak for from this altar, their arrow backfires in the name of Jesus. I say again, their arrow backfires in the name of Jesus. The hand of God preserve your pregnancy. The hand of God establish your pregnancy. If you are saying amen, say better amen. The last miscarriage you had will be the last you will have. If you are saying amen now, say better amen. amen.
God is a confirmer of his word. So when he says be fruitful, it's not a suggestion. It's even beyond the commandment, it's a decree. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The word replenish there means refill, restock, reload, top up. Did you get that scripture that we read? It's how we make you exceedingly fruitful. So you are over fruitful now. <laughs> Something happened in 2010. Was prayed, I was praying for mothers of nations in a service like this. And I said, don't stand for anybody. If you stand for anybody, you go carry you. <laughs> what mama didn't hear? She came and stood. Guess what happened? She carried So they were now wondering what happened to her. So it was when the pregnancy had grown. And I asked her, what happened now? He said, I came for my daughter. I didn't hear when you said, don't stand for anybody. I said, you don't carry now. <laughs> it, you know, some people play with utterance from the altar. I'm telling you the truth. They play with the utterance from the altar. So she carry. There was another incident. We call her Mama London. The daughter was in Farway, London, believing God for the fruit of the womb for eight years. Her friend invited her to the church. She just wrote the name and it was anointed. The person was in London. That same month, God visited her. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. I want you to hear this. There is no barrier in the spirit. Fruitfulness, like I said in the first service, is not the potency of man. Is the fruit of his reward. Say with me, his reward. his reward. We'll see how this reward comes. Now, what does it mean to be fruitful? I'm taking it again. It means to be highly productive. It means to be fertile. It means to be rich. It means to be succeeding in succession. It means to be profitable. It means to be prosperous. It means to be effective in whatever you are doing. That's what it means to be fruitful. And every fruitfulness is the of the spirit. It's the act of the spirit. That's why the angel could say unto Mary, he said, thou shalt bring forth a son and his name shall be called Emmanuel. How shall this be since I know not a man? He said, the power of the highest shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall come upon thee. So every time the power of the highest come upon thee, whether they say it's low sperm count or weak sperm count or weak ovary or weak eggs, because there is an empowerment, there must be productivity. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness shall become like a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. 
So if your life even look like a wilderness, because the oil is coming upon you, you will become a fruitful field. If you believe it, you will say it better. Amen. Amen. Job said the breath of the Almighty has made me and the Spirit of the Lord has given me life. Once the oil come upon you, the Spirit takes over. The Spirit takes over. So fruitfulness is the act of the Spirit. It's the act of the Spirit. So you must celebrate it, you are fruitful. You must keep declaring it, you are fruitful. I am fruitful because I'm born of the Spirit. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. And he that is born of the Spirit is spirit. So you keep declaring it, I'm fruitful. My body is fruitful. You, my mind is fruitful. Should I say something? A barren mind is worse than a barren womb. A barren mind is worse than a barren womb. And Papa said, blind mind is worse than blind eyes. So fruitfulness is believed before it is received. You must believe it in your heart. I am fruitful. I'm productive. I'm successful. And as you believe it, you begin to manifest it. So you must celebrate your fruitfulness and begin to declare it. We have in the same spirit of faith. We believe. Therefore, we speak. We speak. Now, should I tell you something? Even though God told Abraham, Sarah, thy wife shall bring forth until they began to manifest it by their declaration, they wouldn't have entered into it. Now, see how they did it. What's your name? No. Yes. Come. Are you believing God for another child? Talk before I start. Yes. Praise God. Now, her name initially was Sarai. Until God changed it to Sarah. His name initially was Abraham. Until God changed it to Abraham. Sarai means mother of nation. Now, what's the name of the child you are expecting? <laughs> you better talk now. Now drama go do you <laughs> You don't know the name. Now boy or girl, tell me. Girl. Ma give her name. Eh? I should give her name. Esther. So they began to call her Mama Esther. So every time they call her Mama Esther, she's expecting Esther. The consciousness of Esther is coming as down on her. Am I saying something to somebody? As a man thinketh in his heart. Every time they call Mama Esther, something will strike her. It is getting real. Esther is coming. Esther is coming. Yeah. Esther is coming. Yeah. Esther is coming. Yeah. Now, do, go and sit down. Do you know the way you feel affects your hormones physically? Am I saying something? Do you, you are a doctor. You agree with me? The way you feel affects your hormones. If they call you poor man, say I reject it. <laughs> you begin to feel bad that they call me poor. 
begin to feel bad. Begin to feel bad. Begin to feel bad. Begin to feel bad. Why? You are feeling poor, so you are living poor. But as we call her Mama Esther now, guess what? Even if she was losing hope before, <laughs> Esther is on the way. Amen. Esther is on the way. Amen. In fact, even God will be saying, Angels, Esther should be on her way. <laughs> Am I saying something to somebody? Did you catch that picture? That was the reality. Though the prophecy had gone ahead upon Abraham, but he needed to live in the picture. No wonder God said, Look up. What's he has done? He said, So shall the children be. But to make it sure, Mother of Nation, Father of Nation. Now, could I tell you something? They have passed monopause times two. And I call it mono mono. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying now? So mono one plus mono two is what? Mono mono. But he couldn't stop Isaac from coming. Am I saying something to somebody? Mono one plus mono one is mono mono. But because God has said so, Isaac was on the way. Isaac was on the way. He was living in the reality. As scripture says concerning Abraham, against all hope, believed in hope, and gave glory to God. He called it, those things that be not as though they were. If you are going to be fruitful, you will call it. That is what it means to steer it. Whatever you want to see, declare it. It doesn't matter who is angry with you. What scripture says, you shall have whatsoever you say. Not what they say. What you say is superior to what they say. I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary shall not be able to resist nor can say. Their word is not binding on you. Do you know why? No weapon. Form no fashion against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against me in judgment, he said, I. He didn't say the Lord. He didn't say the Lord. That's why any person troubling me, my family, my mouth go kill you. He said, I shall do what? Let's read that scripture. The way people are looking at me, I'm not happy. Isaiah 54. No weapon that is formed against thee shall do what? And every tongue in judgment, pause there. Pause, pause. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, he say, thou shall condemn. If I condemn you, you are condemned. Because if I bless, you are blessed. If I also curse, you also what? Curse. He said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me. Say the Lord. Which means I'm doing a righteous thing. You trouble me, I curse you. It's a righteous thing with God. That's what scripture says. It's a righteous thing for the Lord to recompense tribulation. We will do that in third service. War against barrenness and agents of barrenness. So you don't wait, you don't respond to what people are saying. Say what you want to see. You trouble me. If they trouble you, open your mouth and design their life. Design their life. I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary will not be able to resist nor can say. And lastly, Abraham sees. He began to call. He called those things that be not as though they were. <laughs> Every child of God is a caller. He begin to call them. I hear what I'm saying now. So you must recognize, lastly, that your father is the baby maker. So you are not permitted to be a baby beggar. 
Am I saying something to somebody? Father is a baby maker. So why will you be a baby beggar? We have twofold of relationship with God. Sons of God and servants of God. You too, you are a son of God. So when you understand this, you have a dual platform to assess this blessing. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be thy father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say the Lord. So I am both a son and also what? A servant. Servants are entitled to reward. Sons are also entitled to heritage. So as a son, you are entitled to your heritage. It's your heritage. As a son, you don't beg for fruitfulness. It's your heritage in God. As a servant, you don't beg for it. It is your reward for service. So by sonship and by servanthood, you can collect it. So by, by service now, we are acting it. We are stirring it up. You shall serve. I shall bless. So I'm staring it by service. I'm staring it by declaration. So you can't miss it. I say you can't miss it. I say you can't miss it. I say again you can't miss it. So whatever has delayed you till now, it is over. I say the delay is over. So you, you, if, you say, if you say you are waiting on God, God will say me too, I'm waiting on you. He say I'm expecting I'm believing God. Who told you? you is a lie. Say God has done it. Say with me, God has done it. You know, at times some people will out of uh, let them mock you again. They will just come. How far now? Well, what's in the happen now? What's in the happen now? Tell them God has done it. You know, the more you, if you tell them God has done it, it's like you carry pepper. They pour inside hot water. Their faith will turn to shit. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? Now, uh, Papa shared this testimony three weeks ago that we were in Lagos. A sister, they just called her. How far now? It don't happen. Yes, God has done it. Immediately she said, God has done it. Not knowing that the woman has been behind the arrow they have been firing her. He said, hey, my chest, my chest, my chest, my chest. Bah, she died. Whoever has been fighting you, God will kill them in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And lastly, the yoke destroyer is available. Rise up to your feet. Are you ready to pray? Are you sure you're ready to pray? I want you to lift up your voice and declare what you want to see. A sister in our Ansuka church told God that um, this one that I've stayed 10 years, now four. How many? So if they were to be doing spacing or family planning, the team, the team balance. The D balance. So when pregnancy took place, the husband, Mumu Konkacha, he was not agitating for the wife to go. But they say, ah, but she, she says she's sick now. Let's go and treat her first now so that we we'll know what she's doing now before you say she should go. They now went to the hospital. As they went to the hospital, they did <laughs> all manner of tests. I don't know what they call it. What do they call it? Not scan. There's one thing they call it. Eh? No. He knows it. He don't want to talk. They did all the tests and they said, 
she's five weeks pregnant. And the thing is already showing. The thing is already showing that she's carrying four. The man was confused. They've already packed her load in the household. The person they were packing the load, the man now, was now behaving like a houseboy. Will you drink Bonvita? <laughs> Will you drink Milo? <laughs> Will you drink Nano? <laughs> it was all by now by a book. He said that she should stay there. Please, they should treat her well so that I will go and bring her and carry her. And that's how God blessed them with four. To cancel 10 years waiting. I said to someone here, well, I'm not expecting you to, to agree, you, but I know I am a proper son of Oyedepo. If I say it, the God that sent me here will back it. God put in my mouth that delay over you, over your family is over. You are going to lift up your voice and pray that prayer in Leviticus 26 and verse 9. God of fruitfulness, show yourself in my life. You say you will have respect unto me and make me fruitful and multiply me. Your own may not be fruit of the womb. Lord, enlarge my business. Enlarge my coast of blessings. God of fruitfulness, confirm your word in my life. God of fruitfulness, confirm your word in my life. God of fruitfulness, confirm your word in my life. God of fruitfulness, confirm your word in my life. 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 God of fruitfulness, confirm your word in my life. You say you will have respect unto me and make me fruitful in this covenant of fruitfulness. Whatever has delayed my progress, whatever has reduced my success, God of fruitfulness, confirm your word in my life. Jacusila et acla neko Jesus ale retaklo pe predi sezona zero shikateri aleta and redele shikotolo sabalada rateketole balushata God of fruitfulness, you say you will have respect unto me and make me fruitful. In Jesus' name we pray. Every expectant mother and every expectant father take a piece of biro, a piece of paper and a biro. Write the name of the child. Write, write the name of the child. Before we partake of the anointing, write it. Mama Esther, write it too. Don't mind this pastor. Prophecy is already been fulfilled in her life. Have you written it? Okay, your own is not child. Write what you want. The way you are looking at me. Write what you want. Give me paper.
Somebody saying, Pastor, are you sure? <laughs> By so many infallible proofs. Lift it up before the Lord. Jesus, you are the confirmer. Whatever has been written in this paper, now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, I decree in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost the God of Oyerepo make it fruitful the God of Oyerepo make it fruitful the God of Oyerepo make it fruitful the God of Oyerepo bring it to pass speedily when he stretch forth his hand no one can turn it back any devil that has been fighting the blessing you desire by this anointing, I command them to expire. I command them to expire. As the oil come upon you and touch this paper, it is written, and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me on my feet. By the oil of the Lord coming upon it, I decree it is turned into testimony. It is turned into testimony. It is turned into testimony. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Put the paper down. All eyes closed, all heads bow. If you are here, you are not born again. If this oil touch you, na heat. Na internal heat. But you want to make it right with Jesus, all eyes closed, all eyes bow. Put your right hand on your chest as I'm doing now. See me and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, Come quickly before we partake of this oil right now. You are going to do your own anointing here. Come now, now. Put your hands together for Jesus as they are coming. Jesus is here. 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 As this oil come upon you, begin to declare what you want. Go ahead. Everywhere. Including here. Including here. They should pass the oil for them. Hallelujah. 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 